My dear the beloved in Christ, our Lord exhorted his followers to prayer, self-denial, and renouncement of the spirit of the world. Jesus Christ repeatedly told us that if we follow the spirit of the world with its selfishness and excessive materialism, we cannot be his disciples. What's meant by the spirit of the world? It's making material concerns the primary objective in life. Worldliness it is a hedonistic pursuit of comfort and sensual satisfaction as the number one priority and measuring scale for one's actions. It's a limiting of one's vision to this short life alone, allowing these maternal material concerns to usurp God's place in the heart. As soon as the worldly man obscures the goal of eternal happiness in heaven, the duties, pursuits, and pleasures of everyday life then easily preoccupied his mind. At the Last Supper, our Lord spoke of Satan as the prince of this world. And when standing before Pilate, declared, My kingdom is not of this world. The world can never, therefore, be reconciled with God or God with the world. Our Lord did not come to abolish suffering, death, ignorance, sickness, and poverty, nor did he promise pleasure and material success. Rather, he came to open the gates of heaven and to guide us there through the Catholic Church, which he founded. He came to show us not only the value of suffering, but to strengthen us so that we can endure and persevere through it. Since Christ's message is so opposed to the selfish ways of human nature, it's only to be expected that Christ and his church should have their enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil, who have rallied together to oppose God's dominion in the souls of men. The practice of this renouncement of the spirit of the world is accomplished when both clergy and laity live according to the words of the gospel and the teachings of Christ. Church history records that in periods in which this was done, there was great flourishing of the spiritual life seen in numerous conversions and saints. On the other hand, when clergy and laity have become worldly and have forgotten the purpose of their existence to know, love, and serve God, they've fallen into deplorable immorality and depravity, bringing vice and corruption not only to their own souls, but to the very seat of the Vatican itself, thus causing great sins of scandal. Their thoughts and actions fall even below those of pagans because these Catholics have lost the spirit of their faith. Renouncement of the spirit of the world has never been more difficult than in the present. There has never been a period of, in history with such immorality, perversity, and apostasy as our own age. We witness the effects of worldliness on every side. The insidious spirit of compromise and liberalism permeates our society. The spirit of the world has captivated hearts and darkened minds. Today it's almost impossible for children to grow up uncorrupted, for teenagers to remain decent and moral, for adults to remain unaffected by the spirit of materialism, dishonesty, and compromise which presses in on all sides. What's your position now? What will your position be in the increasingly difficult days ahead? How many of you, your children or your friends, will remain faithful to Christ? How can you hope to persevere in the days ahead if you're succumbing to materialism now? Materialistic Catholic finds his sentiments and affections focused on the world. He may attend Mass on Sundays and even pray the Rosary, but his heart does not belong to God because the salvation of his soul is not a priority in life. My dear and the beloved in Christ, we must fortify our souls by now, by prayer and sacrifice, whereby we'll be given sufficient strength to overcome the temptations of the world. Only by continual growth in grace and holiness can we hope to persevere. This cannot be looked upon as a small or even large segment of a lot of time set aside, but should be viewed as a total way of life 
as indispensable as breathing. A Catholic is called to live as a Catholic 24 hours a day. In his place of work, at school, in the marketplace, and everywhere he goes. Too many Catholics, perhaps too many of us, are following a double standard. We can become so caught up in our daily concerns that we neglect the welfare of our immortal soul. Our soul is moved to the bottom of our priority list. We know what we must do in order to save our souls, but we neglect them and continue to make excuses. How can you expect to re- anyone to remain faithful who in this late hour still continues to live in the spirit of the world who still makes excuses to God. If we attempt to placate and serve the world, we cannot serve Christ. Our Lord said, you cannot serve two masters. My dearly beloved in Christ, life is a spiritual warfare. We must confront many enemies, both within and without. Our human nature has a strong inclination or propensity to sin as a result of the original sin of Adam and Eve. We're also faced with many occasions of sin. During Advent, we should attempt to avoid all unnecessary occasions of sin. A person, place, or thing that easily leads us into sin. This is the beginning of the avoidance of sin. This is the first sacrifice God demands of you. Tampering with the occasion of sin is dangerous, and those who live in unnecessary danger will perish in it. My dearly beloved in Christ, God loves you at every moment of your existence. His love for you does not change. When you sin, you turn away from God. But it's your turning away, not His. What you need to do is to turn back, to convert. Regardless of your past, you can make a decision to avoid sin. God's grace will give you the understanding and the willpower to live this way. It's not too late for you to amend your life. Although I can encourage you to make the decision and mend your life, I cannot force you. If you make that decision, it'll take some planning. It's a process. It won't happen automatically. Don't spend too much time with people who don't share your standards. Don't waste your time. Don't get into tempting situations and think that you'll be strong enough to get out of them because you probably won't. You're not made that way. Passion will cause your reason to shut down. You need all the reason you can get, so hang on to it and avoid the danger. In order to avoid sin, you have to stay close to God. He'll provide you with all the help you need. Be faithful to your daily prayers, especially during Advent, the rosary, every day. Pray specifically for strength to conquer your predominant sin. Every time you say no to sin, every time you walk away from a temptation, you're going to get stronger. It's a victory. Virtues like a muscle get stronger every time you use it. When you lift weights, the weights don't get any lighter, but as your muscles get stronger, things become easier to lift. With God's assistance, it'll become easier to conquer sin and practice virtue. I'd just like to close with the story. He who frequently thinks of eternity will enjoy earthly pleasures only in moderation. A pious king was one day asked by his brother why he took so little part in worldly pleasures. Again, he's a king. His brother asked him that. My dear fellow, the king answered, suppose I were to put a rotten plank across a deep pit at the bottom of which a fire was burning. And you are obliged to go and stand on that plank. Then suppose I set four soldiers around you with lowered bayonets almost touching your person, while over your head a sharp sword was suspended by a single thread. After that, I would have brought the choicest food before you, and station a band close by to play music for you. Could you enjoy your food and listen with any pleasure to the music while you were in such a position? The young man, who had listened attentively to this long speech from his brother's lips, answered unhesitatingly, No! It'd be quite impossible to be merry 
if I were surrounded by so many dangers. The king continued, Now think, if you cannot enjoy anything because you're in constant danger of death to the body, how can I take excessive pleasure in anything worldly, seeing that my soul is threatened by a far greater danger, that of eternal perdition? I have before me the fire of hell. I stand on a rotten plank, my frail body. Death may strike me at any moment. And over me the sword of eternal justice is suspended. The young man saw the justice of what his royal brother had said. And from that time forth, he amended his life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.